This news is funded by viewers like you. Please support our work at democracynow.org slash give. Christmas has been canceled in Bethlehem. As the death toll tops 20,000 in Gaza, we begin today's show in the occupied West Bank, yes, in the city of Bethlehem, the birthplace of Jesus Christ. The Christmas season is normally a festive time in Bethlehem, but not this year, as church leaders have canceled public Christmas festivities, citing Israel's devastating attack on Gaza. This is the Reverend Isaac Munther, the Palestinian pastor of a landmark Lutheran church in Bethlehem. He addressed his congregation earlier this month in front of a nativity scene with the figure of Jesus Christ in a kafia surrounded by rubble. Christmas is a ray of light and hope from the heart of pain and suffering. Christmas is the radiance of life from the heart of destruction and death. In Gaza, God is under the rubble. He is in the operating room. If Christ were to be born today, he would be born under the rubble. I invite you to see the image of Jesus in every child killed and pulled from under the rubble, and every child struggling for life in destroyed hospitals, and every child in incubators. Christmas celebrations are canceled this year, but Christmas itself is not and will not be canceled, for our hope cannot be canceled. That was the Reverend Isaac Munther, the Palestinian pastor of a landmark Lutheran church in Bethlehem. He spoke in front of a nativity scene with the figure of Christ surrounded by rubble, the baby Jesus. Earlier this week, Pope Francis accused Israel of committing terrorism in Gaza after an Israeli sniper shot dead two women, an elderly woman and her adult daughter, who had tried to, tried to save her mother at a Catholic church in Gaza City, where they had sought refuge. It was the Holy Family Parish Church. Politico reports Israel recently attacked a church and a convent in Gaza, even though congressional staffers in Washington had urged Israel to protect the religious sites and gave them the coordinates of the churches. We go now to Bethlehem, where we're joined by the Reverend Mitri Rahed. He's president of Dar al Khalima University in Bethlehem, Palestinian Christian theologian who's authored many books, including Decolonizing Palestine, the Land, the People, the Bible. It's hard to say Merry Christmas to you, uh, Reverend Professor Dr. Mitri Rahab, um, but I will ask you how you're observing Christmas this year. Talk about Bethlehem. You know, it's a very sad Christmas. I don't think in my entire life uh, I experienced uh, so much sadness, but also so much anger Iber, uh, about what's happening in Gaza. Um, as you said, the celebration, I mean, the festivities were canceled in Bethlehem, so you don't have Christmas lights, you don't have Christmas tree in Bethlehem. There are no tourists coming because of the war. Um, and the people are uh, not up for celebrations uh, because our people in Gaza, uh, but not only our people in Gaza, also our people in the West Bank, we here in the West Bank, uh, we experiencing uh, apartheid, uh, colonization by uh, Jewish settlers, uh, and, um, you know, the death tolls, uh, as you said, 20,000 in Gaza, but also even in the West Bank in the hundreds, um, and also the, the, the detainees, Palestinian detainees, within these 75 days in the West Bank are over 3,000. You have said that the story of Christmas, the story of the birth of Jesus, is more relevant now than ever even though you will not be having festivities around this? Uh, correct, uh, because uh, the, the Christmas story actually is a Palestinian story par excellence. It talks about uh, a family in Nazareth, in the north uh, of Palestine, that is uh, ordered uh, by an imperial decree of the Romans uh, to evacuate to Bethlehem, to go there and register. And this is exactly what our people in Gaza has been experiencing these 75 days. Uh, it talks about uh, Mary, the pregnant woman, uh, on the run, uh, exactly like 50,000 uh, women uh, in Gaza who are actually displaced 
um, Jesus was born actually as a refugee. There was no place at the end for him to be born. So he was put uh, in a manger. And this is exactly what also the kids uh, that are coming to life these days in, in Gaza are experiencing. You know, uh, most of the hospitals are uh, damaged, uh, out of service. Um, and so uh, uh, there is no delivery places for all of these pregnant uh, women in Gaza. And then you have the, the bloodthirsty Herod that uh, ordered to kill the kids uh, in Bethlehem to stay in power. Uh, and in Gaza, over 8,000 kids, they have been murdered uh, for Netanyahu to stay in power. Uh, um, and, uh, and you have this uh, message that the angels declared here, uh, glory to God in the highest peace on earth, which was actually a critique of the empire uh, because glory uh, belongs to the almighty and not to the mighty. And uh, the peace uh, that Jesus came to proclaim is not the peace, the Pax Romana, the peace that is based on subjugation uh, and military oppression, but on human dignity, equality, and justice. Uh, and this is actually what we call for. And I have to say, I find it uh, really a shame that uh, that in this season, where uh, every church uh, hears these words, peace on earth, that the United States is vetoing even a ceasefire. It's a shame. I wanted to ask you about this report in Politico. Congressional staff tried to protect Gazan churches by sending locations to Israel. That's the headline. Now, you're in Bethlehem, in the occupied West Bank, and this is about Gaza. The Israeli military received and confirmed the coordinates of the church and covenant in Gaza, both of which aid groups say were later struck by rockets and snipers. Um, it goes on to say the Holy Family Church in Gaza was struck last weekend. The location of the church was included on a list of coordinates provided to the Israeli military by aid organizations and staffers on Capitol Hill in an effort to protect those sheltering there. We reported in the last few days, among others, about the mom, the elderly mother and her daughter, um, who were sheltering at the Holy Family Church. This is what the Pope referred to when he talked about Israel engaging in terrorism. Um, first, the mom was hit. The daughter carries her, and then she's hit. This is Pope Francis speaking on his 87th birthday at the Vatican Sunday. Yeah. Yes. And let us not forget our brothers and sisters suffering from war in Ukraine, Palestine, Israel, and other conflict zones. May the approach of Christmas strengthen our commitment to open paths of peace. I continue to receive from Gaza very serious and painful news. Unarmed civilians are being bombed and shot at. And this has even happened inside the Holy Family Parish compound where there are no terrorists, but families, children, and sick people with disabilities, and nuns. A mother and her daughter, Ms. Nahida Khalil Antan, and her daughter, Samar Kamal Antan, were killed and others wounded by the snipers as they went to the bathroom. The house of Mother Teresa's nuns was damaged. Their generator hit. Some say it's terrorism. It's war. Yes, it's war. It's terrorism. That is why scripture says that God stops war breaks bows and breaks spears. Let us pray to the Lord for peace. So that's the Pope speaking on his 87th birthday. Um, I want to go on with this political piece. Um, it says, a church and a convent were struck in Gaza, listed among Christian facilities congressional staffers had flagged to Israeli authorities for protection, according to a series of emails from October. The emails, which were obtained by Politico, show an increasingly frenzied back and forth between Catholic Relief Services, one of the largest Christian aid organizations in Gaza and Senate staff over an effort to get a commitment from Israel to avoid targeting a number of buildings where its staff and civilians were sheltering, they would ultimately be attacked. Um, Reverend Mitri Raheb, your response. You know, uh, Israel have been attacking uh, churches, mosques, hospitals, schools, universities. Believe it or not, uh, 11 universities were destroyed in this war. Over 200 schools uh, were destroyed. 
Uh, most of the hospitals, except uh, nine, are out of service right now because of Israeli attacks on them. But let's come to the churches, you know. This is not the first attack that happened last uh, Saturday that the, that the Pope uh, talked about. Uh, because uh, the first attack on a Christian institutions happened to the Ahli Hospital, the so-called Baptist hospitals that belong actually to the Anglican Church. Uh, and then Israel... Uh, 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 had an airstrike on the Greek Orthodox Church, uh, St. Uh, Perfurius, uh, where they uh, destroyed fully the assembly hall of that church, uh, where 50 Christians uh, were having refuge, uh, 20 were killed, uh, and 14 were injured. Uh, and then Israel destroyed a brand new state-of-the-art uh, Arab Orthodox uh, cultural and social uh, center, uh, it costed $6 million. Uh, it was inaugurated just a few months ago, and it was made to rebels. It doesn't exist anymore. You cannot see it anymore. Uh, and then Israel attacked the Rosary Sister, another Catholic school. Uh, this last week, they attacked, and the Pope uh, spoke about it, uh, um, actually a rehabilitation center uh, for children with disability that is run by the sisters of uh, Mother Teresa. Uh, and um, and they attacked again last week uh, the Ahli Hospital that is now almost out of service. Uh, beside the sniper killing uh, this uh, to the older woman with her daughter within the uh, Holy Family compound. And you know what? When uh, some other parishioners in that compound wanted to go out to help them and to to save them. Uh, Israel uh, uh, launched a missile on them, and 10 uh, people from that uh, parish uh, were uh, injured in that, uh, in that missile attack. I'm on daily basis uh, in contact with, with those two parishes uh, to see how they are doing. And I tell you, uh, just a few hours ago, I received again another cry for help that that compound, the Holy family compound is surrounded by Israeli tanks and uh, Israeli snipers are all around on the rooftops of the neighboring buildings. Uh, and this is just two days before Christmas. These are the Christmas gifts of Israel for the Christian community in Gaza. And I fear that uh, this is the end uh, of the Christian presence in Gaza. And you know, the Christian presence in Gaza is a 2,000 years old presence. I mean, this these are not new converts. Uh, uh, Christianity came to Gaza already in the first century. And throughout the last 20 centuries, there was uh, a, a living Christian uh, work there. And actually, uh, an affluent uh, Christian community in Gaza. Uh, and I think uh, this... Uh, uh, this community is going to be extinct uh, because of uh, Israel war uh, on Gaza. 3% of the Christian community in Gaza was murdered in these 75 days, 3%. I wanted to play for you, uh, and we played this earlier in the week, the deputy mayor of Jerusalem, Fleur Hassan Hum recently appearing on British news program LBC and claiming, in fact, there are no Christians in Gaza. Why is it necessary, it would, is reported, to start shooting, having snipers outside a church? I don't. I saw the reports this morning. Um, the church, there are no churches in Gaza, so I'm not quite sure where the report well, is, is, is talking a, there's about. There's a Catholic church in there, isn't there, that is... Yeah, unfortunately, there are no Christians because they were dry, dro drove and driven out by... Well, there are, Christians. respectfully, there are Christians because I spoke to an MP yesterday who has family members in the church who are Christians. Well, I don't Unless know what happened. I don't know who was attacked. I didn't see the report. So that's uh, the Jerusalem deputy mayor, Fleur Hassan Nahum, speaking on the British news program, LBC. Um, your response, Reverend? You know, I mean, we are unfortunately used uh, for, to Israeli lies uh, and fake news uh, uh, that they keep uh, spreading. You know, how they cannot know that there are uh, a Christian community in Gaza. I mean, uh, uh, you, you spoke before that they got the coordinate of the two churches, uh, like they get also the coordinate 
of the hospitals. Um, and um, remember, these Christians every year uh, were applying for permits to come over Christmas to Bethlehem. So the Israeli authorities, they know everyone by name, by picture, by age, by gender. Uh, uh, again, but these are the lies. And you know why Israel can do all of this? Because uh, they are impugned. Uh, nobody, because of the American veto, brings them actually and make them responsible mm -hmm. for what they are doing. And now they actually are destroying all of Gaza. And guess who will pay for it? They will call uh, some Arab countries or Europe or others to rebuild Gaza. Once Israel is made responsible for its, uh, its atrocities, they will stop doing that. Uh, and uh, for me as a pastor, I have to say, you know, imagine, imagine if a synagogue uh, was attacked and 20 Jewish worshippers in a synagogue were killed by an airstrike by any country. The whole Christian world will be in uproar. Unfortunately, we don't have the, we don't hear the Christian community actually doing much about the atrocity happening in Gaza today. Reverend Rahab, I wanted to ask you about um, your latest book, um, uh, Decolonizing Palestine, which challenges the weaponization of biblical text to support the current settler colonial state of Israel. That's how it's described. And I was wondering if you could comment on some of the most um, adamant um, supporters of the Israeli military are U.S. evangelicals, and some of the fiercest critics are progressive Jews, like Jewish Voice right. for Peace. And if you could comment yeah. on both. Yes. Uh, actually, in this book, uh, I try uh, to show that, actually, uh, the current state of Israel, uh, in its occupation of the West Bank and Gaza, uh, is actually a settler colonial project. And a settler colonial project means uh, uh, these are settlers that, that they come, in this case from Europe mainly, to settle permanently in, a, in another country, not to live with the native people, but to replace the native people and to drive them out of their own country. And to do that, they have to create a policing state uh, and they have to demonize uh, the native people as savage, uh, as terrorists, as backwards as human animals, as we are hearing uh, from Israeli uh, politicians right now. And actually, if you uh, heard uh, Netanyahu uh, when, 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 he, uh, when he said that the Israeli troops are entering Gaza that same day in October, late October, uh, he quoted uh, the Bible uh, and talked about Amalek. And that is from 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 3 where God is uh, telling uh, Saul uh, to go and um, extend the whole Amalek community, uh, not to spare man, woman, elderly, child, even ox and sheep. And so this is a call for genocide. Uh, and this is, again, a settler colonial uh, tool that was done in North America. It was done in South Africa. It was done in many other a country. So what happened in the United States 400 years ago to the Native Americans is happening to Palestinians today in Gaza. So this is what I'm talking about. And this weaponization of the weaponizing of the Bible by Christian Zionists uh, is, is something that is uh, for us very troublesome. You know, for us, uh, these Christian Zionists are actually anti-Semite because they don't love the Jewish people. They want all Jews to come to Palestine according to their ideology, that two-thirds will be killed in a war and the last third will convert to Christianity. So basically, they are calling for the annihilation uh, of the Jewish people. But Netanyahu has no problem to share bed with them, not out of love, but to fulfill uh, selfish desires, so to say. And I'm so glad that actually uh, Netanyahu doesn't represent the whole Jewish people. You know, Judaism is very broad, like Christianity and Islam. It's a very broad religion. You have from the far right to the far left. 
Uh, and for me, uh, groups like Jewish Voices for Peace, Not In My Names, and many other groups that uh, I'm in contact with them, they are a sign of hope uh, that actually uh, together uh, as Jews, Muslims, and Christians uh, who are interested in equality and human dignity and justice so that both peoples can share the land and the three religions can live side by side. I think this is the vision that we are calling for. Reverend Mitri Rahab, we want to thank you for being with us. Reverend Mitri Rahab is the president of Dar al Khalima University in Bethlehem, Palestinian Christian theologian who's authored many books, including Decolonizing Palestine, the Land, the People, the Bible. Democracy Now! is funded by viewers like you. Please give today at democracynow.org/give.